Okay, folks, it's time for a laugh. Thank you. You're a wonderful audience. Just too bad you're not here. Except for you, in the back. What's your name? Larry. Larry Laffer. You sure look like it, too. It's one dynamite joke after another today. Today's the premiere of my new stage show, featuring exclusive new material never before heard on any stage in the world. Wow! An orc, a troll, and a Mandalorian walk into a bar. The Mandalorian says, I roll a seven. The orc drops dead in its tracks. Says the Mandalorian, Hey, I didn't shoot first. Ah, uh, okay. That one's kind of so-so. A necromancer pops up in front of a busty blonde. She says, is that a high character value in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <sighs> The other day, I ordered an escort service. But they didn't want to jerk me off. They just wanted to heal me all the time instead. They told me that's what happens when you're an escort at a party. So I said, I get the party bit. I found a great spell here that can even silence the dragon back home. Damn, that other joke book worked better. Imagine you roll for an orgasm, and all you get is wisdom. The other day, I was in the forest and saw an orc about to eat a beautiful woman. So I said, hey, and uh, then I wanted to search the room, but I only rolled a three, and then the orc ate me instead. Why did the rogue Go to an LGBTQ plus tab. He was looking for traps. Hmm. I don't understand that one either. Let's try this one. Why did the city watch shoot the warlock on sight? Because he was a black magician. <sighs> this isn't going to work. I better go back and test it again. I'm trying to work here. What do you want? Your jokes are kind of... odd. I made them all up myself. You did? Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes I take advice from my team. You have a team? Stop the interrogation already. Yeah, I take what I can get. Actually, I copy it all from a joke book. And I don't even have that anymore. I lost it. I had it with me at that crazy festival. Maybe somebody there switched it. Instead, now I got this book about role-playing games. But they're kind of strange. I mean, who wouldn't want to dress up as a sexy nurse or something in a role-playing game, but a mage? A healer? Or... A dwarf? Well, I guess I'll just have to make the best of it. Can I have this book on role-playing games? The only thing I'd swap it for would be a decent joke book. Preferably the one I know. If you can get me that, you can have this dungeon master crap. Well, I'll let you get back to clowning around. Hey, 
Comedy is a serious business. But we can't get away from here. I know. I feel the same way you do, in case you haven't noticed. But we can't just play LARP anyway. And how are we supposed to do that without a Game Master? We just make it up ourselves? Have you ever made anything up yourself? Uh... No. But being a Game Master can't be that hard. You also said making a computer game wasn't hard. Hey, and nobody told me you need an engine for that. And it was the publisher's fault anyway. We didn't have one. But they would have screwed everything up if we had found one. Whatever. We need a Game Master. And Game Masters don't just fall from the heavens. Besides, can't even enter the ruins. We could play right here. No. There's not enough atmosphere. You know what? I've had enough. Yeah, we're out of here. Hey, what are you two doing here? Are you selling pie phones in the jungle now? And do they make you wear those clothes? Oh, damn, Finley. It's that weirdo from New Lost Wages. Don't move, Kyle. Maybe he won't notice us. I'm already talking to you. Damn, it didn't work. What are you doing here on the island? We came here for the Galactic Festival. It was supposed to be a one-of-a-kind event. Galactic creatures, lots of action and music. They promised that nothing would be impossible. And women. <laughs> yeah, loads of stars were supposed to be here. They weren't. Total flop. No stars. We almost drowned. And then there was the storm. All a total waste. But we found a few like-minded people here and we thought, huh, let's do a LARP. I have no idea what a LARP is. A live action role-playing game? We slip into the roles of characters with whom we can identify. Or who are completely different from ourselves. <laughs> and then we immerse ourselves completely in a world of fantasy for a while. Doesn't sound half bad. But it all depends on the quality of the Game Master. They lead us through the fantasy world, and if they can't do that... Unfortunately, we don't have one at the moment. Have you seen a book of bad jokes around here anywhere? Joe, we took one of those from the festival. A role-playing book went missing there. It sucks. Can I have it? Sure. We threw it away. Threw it away where? Somewhere out there, outside the cave. Okay. I have to get going. Candles always come in handy. Especially good with milk. How useful. Hi, I'm Larry. Larry Laffer. And you look like a time traveler. What? What on earth gave you that idea? I'm a janitor. And that would have been my next guess. I'm Will Comply. Um, interesting name you have there. You can thank my parents for that. What were their names? Reese and Eve. So what do you do as a janitor? Ah, uh, you know, cleaning services. Do you work at a school or something? No way! I'm a freelance janitor. If the dirt gets bad and you just don't know, who you gonna call? You? <laughs> you know it! Will Comply gets everything clean. I can yell at school children, tenants, or employers too if that's what the client wants. Costs extra though. How'd you end up here? I was looking for a new professional challenge. So this galactic festival came along at the perfect time. So I thought, hey, why not apply in the corresponding costume? So I made this one myself, got the job, and... Well, I'm sure you saw how that turned out. Now I don't know how to get back to new lost wages, and somehow I ended up with these guys. They told me that they needed more players for their LARP. I've never done anything like that before. But I'm flexible. And in this LARP, you are... What? An intergalactic janitor, of course. Isn't that a little unimaginative? 
isn't a LARP about slipping into completely different roles? But why should I completely abandon my innate abilities? Besides, a mop is a weapon not to be underestimated. It's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of cleaning equipment. I have been to a lot of places, but it wasn't until I arrived on this island that I truly understood the word special. What? Don't listen to her. She has a problem with men like us who have extraordinary gifts. As Game Master, I can offer you a great story. Really? Can I clean up in there too? Really? The best would be if it takes place in a filthy dump where I have to make a heroic effort to clean up. Is there anywhere like that around here? I have to find the perfect location for the LARP first. Good, then let me know. Hey, Smokey Bear, you're here too. Larry Laffer, Richard. This is the man I was telling you about, who opened my eyes to the great truth. Oh, it's an honor. I hope I too may experience an awakening like that. Who calls their kid Red Shirt? We didn't want to bother to think one up first, and then have him drop dead anyway. What? That's what those two guys over there said. I have no idea what they meant either. But I'm an important member of the crew. We agreed on that. I don't understand any of this, but those two seem to know what they're talking about. My real name is Captain Dickard! Whatever. Anyway, we're here for a LARP. What have you been up to, Smokey? Not so loud. They have microphones everywhere. If I'm not careful, they'll track me down again. Oh, right. I had to leave new lost wages in a hurry because they picked up my scent. They were everywhere. The man on the bus who kept looking at me, the ticket machine was watching me, and then there was this cat. It was in league with them. I then went to Louisiana for a conference on the secret world conspiracy. That's where I learned so many more hidden truths. 111! That's where I also received a flyer for a galactic festival here on this island. There were supposed to be lectures about the aliens who landed here a long time ago and founded a high culture. Supposedly, they hid their profound knowledge about mankind here. A place where you can discover the final insight into yourself. I heard about that, too. That's what I'm saying! There must be something to it. Anyway, the festival was a disaster. I don't know who organized it, but nothing worked. But at least I met these other folks who are organizing a LARP. Don't tell them, but I think they actually believe it's just a game. And that's when it's the path to true self-discovery. What's supposed to happen in this LARP? I want to find traces of an ancient civilization. They could be behind the current conspiracy. And I expect an interstellar adventure. Alien races with whom we can live in peace. A real step forward for mankind. Wisdom and peace. Earlier, you said something about wanting to kick some alien ass. Um, for purely dramaturgical reasons, of course. Besides, I'd really like to experience a fist fight against a lizard man where he shreds my shirt and everyone sees my muscles. Lizard man, where? I never should have thrown my old tinfoil hat in the trash. This new one is crap. Of course, it can't be a first contact because that would require following a different directive. Where are the lizard men? Easy, Smokey, easy. I haven't seen any. That only means that they're well hidden. But without a game master, nothing's gonna happen. Those two bozos over there know exactly how this should work. See you later. Here's your joke book. Ah, here it is. Finally, some quality humor from the old days. There's even an appendix in the back that lists who you can insult with which joke. Here, you can have this role-playing bullshit now. Thanks. So everyone, welcome to my show. Everything's good to go now. I have my tried and true repertoire of jokes again. <laughs> I'd like to apologize to all the fringe groups I might offend, like women. <laughs> this is now a safe space for tasteless humor, people. Here we still make jokes like in the old days. No one here has to apologize for their humor. Everything still goes here. You can get naked in front of people and... Uh, okay, maybe not everything. 
All right. Hold on to your hats. A blonde crashes a helicopter. The investigating officer asks her, why? She says, it got cold in here, so I turned off the fan. <laughs> Why do older blondes park even worse than young blondes? Because hearing gets worse with age. <laughs> Been there, done that, right? Oh yeah, the blondes. But hey, let me try some different material. You can't just make fun of blondes all the time. After all, we also have the foreigners. <laughs> What do you call a foreigner who owns their own home? Adopted. <laughs> Two foreigners are sitting in a car. Who's the driver? A cop. <laughs> How do you stop a foreign army tank? You shoot the guy pushing it. <laughs> what do you call a foreigner with a lawnmower? Unemployed. <laughs> hey, if this is all too high for you, I'd be more than happy to take it to your level. Even though it's pretty dark down there. <laughs> the other day, I said to the guy at the coconut stand, I'd like to have three nuts. He said, Me too! What's red has a crust and wanders around in the forest. Little bread riding hood. <laughs> so the dentist says to me, this is gonna hurt. So I said, nah, I'll be fine. The dentist says, I slept with your wife. <laughs> okay, I can see this is all uh, still a little over your heads. Let's try something a little different. What did the duck say when she bought lipstick? Put it on my bill. <laughs> what did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies! <laughs> I just wrote a song about tortillas. Actually, it's more of a rap. Get it? Rap? Tortillas? Eh? Man, I really just don't know. You know, this used to be a lot easier. Everyone used to laugh. No one is worried about a lawsuit or a shitstorm on the goddamn internet. You were just funny. But nowadays, now it has to either be sophisticated, or you have to be sure you don't offend anyone. You wanted to make jokes about white people? Okay, fine. I got that. I had a nervous breakdown the other day. The supermarket was out of avocado. Ah, oh, see, I don't find that funny either. I went to the movies the other day, but I couldn't enjoy the film because it wasn't scientifically accurate.
Hey, I could do some old men jokes too. They don't want to hear them, but then again, they can't complain. <laughs> Two old men walk into one another on the street. One asks the other, Say, do you take Viagra? The other one answers, No, I don't need it when I'm out and about. And at home, it would just be a waste of money. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, so nobody gets any ideas. I don't need Viagra. A clown walks into an old folks home and asks, Everybody here? They all answer, yeah. He says, but not for long. Okay, time to break out the big guns. What is the difference between a tie and a cow's tail? A cow's tail covers the entire asshole. I bought some shoes from a drug dealer the other day. I don't know what he laced them with, but I was tripping all day. What's the difference between a bar and a clitoris? Men can always find a bar. My father was the same way. I never saw him. He was always in the bar. They banned me from the library for always putting the books on women's rights in the fantasy section. Ah, man. It's not even like I find this all so incredibly funny myself. It always depends on the audience. Some people like it that way. And hey, I don't want to just eke out a meager existence as a struggling artist. I gotta make a living, too. And some of my best friends are blondes. But then, at school, they all said I was so funny. They were always after me to say something funny. And I ended up becoming the class clown. I never got over. It's like an addiction. I should have handled it all different. And now, here I am. I could be your game master. You think this is something for you? Oh, let him give it a try. As long as I can fight Lizard Man. But we also need the perfect setting. Did you find something? Yes, I know the perfect place to hold a great larp. Ooh, great, let's go. Okay, let's go. I can hardly wait. I don't like this place. They're watching me. I can feel it. Start already! Start already! So your spaceship crashed on an alien planet. There you find the remains of an ancient civilization. Good start. Something approaches. It's... A disembodied intelligence. Oh, like in episode 165. The creature possesses... A statue of a lizard. All right. The lizard comes to life. With a grating sound, it comes closer and closer. I consult the Starfleet Manual for the Rules of Conduct for first contact with possessed lizard statues. Uh, yeah. That too, but then it winds up to crush you. You modulate your tricorder's pulse frequency to Alpha 7. Because that would recalibrate the lizard statue's molecular structures! Um, yeah, that's what I was about to say. The statue has frozen. You quickly clear your next move with Starfleet Command. Yes! That's exactly what I'll do! 
Great story. What do I do now? The lizard statue is standing on a deadly trap door. It slowly awakens once more. At the last moment, you pull the lever. Yes! The aliens kidnapped him! Uh, hello? Everything okay down there? Did I defeat the disembodied intelligence? Of course. You are the hero of the day. That was great. I even ripped my shirt and started bleeding. But why is my leg so twisted? Oh, are those my bones? Uh, I'll call the ship's doctor. Okay, let's get started. I hope it's about a really sexy space princess. <laughs> okay, why not? So, uh, a beautiful princess named... Leela, the most beautiful woman in the universe, was kidnapped from the palace on her home planet of... Sex Mania. Just a few hours ago, and the perpetrators are fiendish aliens who want to do terrible things to her. <sighs> oh, what's she wearing? Uh, a bikini made of gold. Perfect. Fortunately, two glorious heroes have taken up the trail to save her. <laughs> That's us, Finley. I know, dumbass. Uh, keep going. The two penetrate the space station where their princess is being held prisoner. They fight their way through to the detention block, but it is full of deadly traps. Awesome. I can almost see the princess in front of me. Yeah, I'm totally into it too. We have to save her. The princess is waiting for her two heroes, yet fate has strewn their path with many a deadly trap. Or the aliens. Hey, this has to really stimulate our imaginations. Yeah, I really want to picture the palace in my mind. The best thing would be to turn off the lights so that we can really live out our roles in the dark. Great idea. Okay, I can do that. I'll turn out the lights now and your adventure begins. Tell us exactly what we need to do to meet the deadly challenges ahead. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. They won't be lethal, I hope. So, you're approached by a vicious tentacled monster. You leap forward. Hold on, princess. We're on our way. And you can lose that gold bikini. Let's go. Pew, 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 pew. Bam, bam. You escape the tentacled monster, but palace guards start to appear. The guards are shooting at you. You duck as low as you can. <clears throat> The shots are causing the walls to collapse. You roll forward. Uh, watch out over there. We're coming, princess! But then, the intergalactical death beams appear out of the walls. You run straight ahead as fast as you can. We're almost there. Nothing can stop us. Hurry! It worked. We beat all the traps. That was a great adventure, Larry. So, what's next? Well, you guys did your part to save the princess. She is at your feet, eternally grateful. Soon, she will remove her gold bikini and summon you to her chambers. <laughs> and, uh, what do we do till then? You'll just have to wait here. As far as I understand it, you have to tell an exciting story now, and I have to use my skills to respond to it. Exactly, right? Hmm, you assume the role of... Sanitation Captain Roger. Oh. Aliens have attacked the spaceship in which you are part of the crew. It's transporting a unique star generator. You are now the last surviving crew member. I like this. You barely manage to escape from the spaceship with an escape capsule and land on a strange planet. And I clean it! No! There you stumble across... 
A floating head. And then? You fight a terrible creature on the planet, and then continue your journey. Oh, that sounds pretty improvised to me. In a nearby city, you buy a small spaceship. That needs cleaning. You manage to fly back to the spaceship, carrying the star generator, and infiltrate it. Using every iota of your intelligence, you trick the aliens and make your way to the star generator in order to clean it. Yeah, just my thing. Where is this star generator thing I have to clean? Right here on the floor. Then I'll get right to it. Sanitation Captain Roger cleans to save the world as we know it. That worked. Hi, we did it! There it is! The Cavern of Cosmic Cognition. Uh, Larry, cavern? Sure, it's clearly a cave. That round thing is the entrance. Anyone can see that. Take a closer look. Uh, where? Ugh, oh, I give up. Something's happening! I feel like there's any cosmic cognition wafting out of there. More like kind of a musty smell. Who knows how long that door was closed and what might be lurking inside. <laughs> 